You know what? I already made a video for this, and I just did it because I did it. Not did it because I wanted to do something good. And I think I'm tired of doing that. I'm tired of trying, and I want to start doing. Don't try to hit someone, or don't try to hit me. Hit me. That's what something... Some guy from the Matrix fucking said that, and I stole that from somebody who said that from something. I don't know. I don't care anymore. It's just doing something valuable and giving it more than what I am giving it right now. That's what I want to do. Doing something better. This month, I am being better, and I will be better. Why? Because I scheduled two things that I haven't been scheduling. Two licenses, two tests that I have to take that I've already studied. I should have done this way before. And I'm doing it last minute before June ends. So two tests that I'm going to take. I'm going to schedule it next week because there's, I have sent the approval letter, <laughs> approval letter this week, today, and I'm waiting for it to be accepted so I'm able to you know, schedule my tests. But I still have like two weeks to study, so let's go. So one every two weeks. But the main thing is, back to the point, is doing things and having a schedule or calendar to do it. I'm writing three things down that I want to do every day. One, two, three. And usually I get those done. Yesterday was the exception. And I think yesterday I did the right thing by doing that exception. Because one of the three things was have actual genuine fun, which I've never had in a long time. By long, I mean a couple of weeks. Why did I say weeks? A couple of months. <laughs> but in a couple of months, and I did that with a friend I haven't been able to talk to since forever. And I know that's not going to be uh, a step towards my financial goal. But hey, not everything is financial. And my goal is to be financially well in order to concentrate on my relationships and my projects that I want to synchronize with people that I know, with the people that I care about, with my friends. Those are projects that I want to do with them, with the, you know, with their capabilities and, you know, and my own capabilities. So I'm doing this to improve my relationships that will in turn improve my quality of life. And Am I sacrificing a little too much on the time horizon with not talking to my friends as much or being there as much? I'm not saying like we don't even talk every day, every week, every month. It's just once every blue moon. Is it wrong for me to say no, I don't want to watch a movie with you when... When one of the three things that I had to do was, you know, relax, you know, just me talking to myself like, hey, no, this is perfectly fine. Yes, I am working hard, but yes, there's a reason why. And yes, I can do better. And yes, I'm going to. So June 1st is today. This month is going to be my month. I'm going to be positive. And I'm going to be assertive that it is my month. I don't care if I am still making zero money online, zero money talking to people, if I still don't have a car. Everyone that I know is keep asking, why don't you have a car yet? Why don't you have a car yet? Well, I can't afford it. That's basically, I can't afford it. And being in the financial sector and being broke is really, uh, yeah, it's really, uh, yeah. It's like being a gym personal trainer and being, well, like I am now. I'm not bad, but I'm not a gym personal trainer. You see what I mean? So it's very interesting of being a prophet while you're stupid or being broke. Sorry, being pro prosper prosper prosperous bringing prosperity while you're broke being a guide while you yourself are lost 
Moses, I love the story of Moses. I'm not going to talk too much on this, but Moses tried to save a, a Jew, a Jewish person from Egypt. I, if I offend someone, I deeply apologize. It's just my lack of ignorance, and I'm sorry. Uh, lack of ignorance. My ignorance and lack of knowledge. You see, that's also ignorance on my end. My stupidity. Hey, it's just a surplus of stupidity that I have. So he said, saved saved Jewish person um, and because of that because of saving one one of the Jews it caused trouble for more of them because you know if one of them revolts or whatever all that all that stuff in any case it he caused more trouble trying to help he should have just done nothing but in turn yeah the person would have suffered but hey he didn't know the consequences that he was going to do he, it so for causing them trouble, listen here, just, just come here, come here, come here, come here. So for causing them trouble, they said, who made you king? Or in other terms, like, who made you the leader? Who made you the king of the Jews to try to go and save us? You were this son of the Pharaoh, and you believed in your high fucking horse and all that bullshit, and, and you haven't proclaimed yourself a Jew and, you know, participated in Jewishness. You're not Jew enough, dude. Why are you saving us? And be, you see what I mean? Like, who made you king? So what did he do? He left. Left. Went through the desert. Became a shepherd. And lived for about, like, 40 years. Well, how much was it? It was a couple decades. You know, who lived with gypsies, but uh, a couple de decades, and, you know, he became more uh, attached to God, and then when God appeared upon himself, he said, hey, I want you to go back and free the people. You know what he said? I don't know how to do that. I'm not qualified enough. You see that? So, I'm not qualified enough to help people. Um be free financially. I'm in the financial services, but I'm not qualified enough. So, what did Moses say? God, who am I? And you know what God said? Pay attention. I'm not too religious, but this is important. He said, I will be with you. Just go and do it. But, Moses, but God, I don't know how to talk. I don't know. He wasn't good. He wasn't a good, you know, like, how do I say, speaker, public speaker. So he couldn't sway the people. So what do you do? He went to his brother. He said, hey, use your brother. God was like, hey, bro, use your, use your brother. He's a good speaker. So he talked to his brother, and his brother was the one who was speaking. Moses this, Moses that, this and that, and this and that. And then... Through that process of him trying to talk to the people, trying to free the people, uh, give hope for the people, through that process, he became a good speaker. And he became the king of the Jews. What, at the start, when he just arrived in Egypt, what did he have that he didn't have when he left because remember, only when he returned did he become, through the process, uh, the king of the Jew. I'm just going to say it like that. You know, a, a leader. A leader. A qualified and worthy leader. Only when he arrived, he became that. He wasn't yet still. But he was worthy enough to become one. So, what was the difference? I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you what I think is the number one difference. Well, multiple things. First, you know, humility. And second, he went through shit. He went through a lot of shit. And even still, he didn't feel like he was worthy. But the shit that he went through made him worthy enough to speak up. He became closer to God enough for him to say hey i know i'm not the best person i'm not this and that but i have something to say and i think it's worth saying it 
And in my case, I think I have something to say. And I've been through shit. And I think it's worth saying. I may not have the house, the money, the car, the looks, the perspicacity, the dialect, the grammar, the body language, the intonation of my voice, the way I walk, dress, talk. Damn. Now that I think about it. <laughs> I may not have all these things, but through the life that I have lived, the short life that I have lived, the life that many people have richer in experiences than I have lived, my life still has an important message to give. And at least when in terms of financial services, which is life insurance, mutual funds, getting your retirement, helping your kids out with their uh, 529 plans to save up for college, saving up for a house that I don't have, but I'm able to open up an account for you to bring in your hard earned money to work for you and take it out when you can. But this is your account. I'm able to do that. And I'm able to tell you that, hey, dude, things you already know. Your bank ain't going to give you shit in interest, dude. It's like less than 1% to 2 or 3%. And let me tell you, root rule 72. If you don't know it, if you don't know it, you divide the interest rate that they're giving you annually by 72. And that's how much it's going to, sorry, you, you divide 72 by the number of interest rate that they're going to give you, 3 2%. So how much is it going to duplicate? Every certain amount of years. If it's 1%, well, every 72 years is going to duplicate, dumbass. So, be very careful. Be very careful. I like to ramble on a bit. I know. I'm aware. I like to dig into so many things. I know. I'm aware. Should I make multiple videos? I don't think so. Am I trying to give you value? Yes. Am I giving overvalue and just stepping into things that I shouldn't? Probably. But. Yeah, I am worthy. I am worthy. And now, now I am worthy. I'm not saying I deserve. I'm saying I am worthy. God has given me, the universe has given me, whatever you want to call it. It's giving me something. And I finally feel like I'm worthy of accepting it. Not for the skills that I have honed, but for the fact that I am humble enough to accept it now with grace and not to reject it out of, out of fear of your pity or out of fear of anything or ego or, or anger or self-worth or lack of self-worth. I feel I am worthy now. I am worthy. Bring it. Give it to me. I do not deserve so much kindness, yet I do deserve whatever you want to give to me because I won't reject opportunities or gift anymore to be positive. You know what? Fuck all this. Fuck this. I'm rambling on. You know what? I don't care.